bar stool. I want justice for all of them whose lives are bought and sold so that a few big shots can climb up on their back. Sounds like a public menace. Show do. I was in the theater in Manhattan and he mentioned my name and the whole theater went crazy. There was this movie out called Reservoir Dogs and I'm saying, I know what that means, you know, because I am a reservoir dog, you know. Those are like dogs uh, that live in a uh, junkyard dogs. They fight the hardest. They scrap the hardest. They um, appreciate food. They, they hide their food. They're, they're just, they're the ones who have suffered the most, um, who understand what life and food and survival really means. My friends have, are in New York. They've gone to see this movie, right? And everybody's wearing the shark skin suits and, you know, everyone's really flying dope. And, and, and Harvey Keitel, everybody's, I'm, I have been a Harvey Keitel fan since, you know, uh, he and Robert De Niro have worked together for many, many, many years. I love him, man. He's fabulous. And I got a chance to work with him. Um, but anyway, so they're watching this movie and they're talking about, you know, they're going through the dialogue they're in the car. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, oh, uh, one of the actors says, you know, you know, I, I really love this movie about this, this is Pam Greer. You know, she's like this tough chick. And like, <laughs> what was the name of the chick who played Christy Love? Pam Greer. No, it wasn't Pam Greer. Pam Greer was the other one. Pam Greer did the film. All my friends just like almost stood up and testified in the middle of the movie. And they wanted, they ran out to call me. Pam, 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 guess what, guess what? They mentioned you in Reservoir Dogs. And I said, no, beep, you know, wow, this is fantastic. Uh, so um, I went to see it right after that. And I was like, wow, you know. And of course, I, I found out um, through the Vine about this, this director, this, this filmmaker who, you know, had a, a great, um, I guess, an affinity for my work and for my soul and just had to put me in that scene. He just thought it was fitting. And of course, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna ask Quentin later. Um, and he told me about it. And I was just like, wow, you know, that's I thought for anything, you know, if you're if you're mentioning anything, that's in a scene in Reservoir Dogs. That's when you made it. You know, that's when you're you're all that, you know, um, I thought that was that was a great moment, and um, it's very endearing and moving. Then I get all of a sudden an invitation to interview, audition for Pulp Fiction, and they said you gotta go. Quentin loves you. He has all of your posters in in his office, and it was impressive and daunting to see five or six huge, very expensive posters on his wall. But we talked, he said, you know, everything works, but you know what, maybe I should just work with you at another time. I said, that's fine. I didn't get a lot of the, the opportunities because I'm too tall, I'm too dark, I'm, my boobs are too big or my butt's too big or it's not flat enough. And, you know, so whatever reason, I bump into him on a street in Hollywood somewhere and I'm driving and I'm with another producer and the producer says, hey, that's Quentin Tarantino. And so my friend leans out the window and he says, hey, Quentin, come over here. And he says, it's Pam Greer over here. And he goes, oh, and so he jogs down to her, the car. He handed me a manila envelope. It was from Q, Q Tarantino. And I went, oh my God, this is the script he sent me. So I open it and there, there is Jackie Brown. And so, I read it, it was awesome. It was absolutely brilliant, but I just didn't think it was for me. What I really didn't believe is like, okay, I'm Jackie Brown. And then he started mentioning, and Sam Jackson and, and Michael Keaton and, and Robert De Niro and Bridget, I'm like, really? They've, they've come aboard, really? He says, yeah. And he said, I want everybody off book by the time we start filming. And I said, okay, I can do that. I was ready off book on every damn page. And so he could call on me at any time and say, we ready to go, we ready to go. It's 15 minutes long, so I don't wanna cut. So every take has to be 15 minutes long, rehearsed, you hit the light, you hit the point, you turn the light up, turn the light down, hit the refrigerator, get the glass out there and don't miss it. And like, how many takes are we going to do on this one, Quentin? <laughs> I can only do a couple. And he would look at, well, you're going to do as many as I want. I said, oh, okay. Well, this is going to be a duel here. Quentin had literally painted that apartment several times to be the right color paint for my uniform or for my skin color and for the drama, for the effect. Yes, they are. 
my grandfather and grandmother, my mom, my, my brother, when we were in Denver or somewhere, yeah, they were my family pictures, which gave me, you know, a little bit of grounding. I did also. And the first take was brilliant where the crew applauded. They loved that scene so much. I'm a student. When you go behind the camera and you can shadow people, you can see what goes on from another perspective. And that goes in my book of what I want to do. You know, I made sure I did my homework and it paid off. And it's exhausting, but it's wonderful. Very proud. And even more so today as I look back and see the work and what it took to be disciplined to work with him. Depth and texture and color and pain and all kinds of emotionality of my to Jackie and people can feel it. At the end of the day, all I wanted to do was a good job.